Michel Foucault, Madness and Civilization, A History of Insanity in the Age of Reason. Embark on a journey through the fascinating evolution of our understanding and treatment of mental illness, as showcased in Michel Foucault's Madness and Civilization, A History of Insanity in the Age of Reason. Explore the changing perspectives towards those deemed a mad, from their freedom in the late Middle Ages to being confined in institutions in the following years. Learn how the confinement practices evolved and expanded to different groups of people, eventually leading to the establishment of separate facilities and the emergence of modern psychiatry. Madness and Marginalization in Europe During the late Middle Ages in Europe, people with mental illness were seen simply as different and often wandered freely. Mentally ill city dwellers were customarily shipped off to sparsely populated areas or other cities. This practice gave rise to the term ship of fools, which was popularized in literature and art. It wasn't until the decline of leprosy in Western Europe that those with mental illness began to be detained. Facilities that were once used to confine leprosy patients were repurposed to detain criminals, derelicts, and people with mental illness. These new detainees were seen as carriers of disease and were marginalized and stigmatized, associating the term madness with being an outcast. Cities began to hold mentally ill people in fortified locations, such as the tower within the walls of Cannes, France. The Great Confinement In the 17th century, the ruling class considered idleness dangerous to society and created institutions to confine the idle and unwanted. The police ensured the poor worked, and general hospitals were established to confine beggars, petty criminals, and the mentally ill. This led to the Great Confinement and a significant population was being confined to these institutions in several European countries. The residents of general hospitals were forced to work and manufacture goods to combat idleness and unemployment. However, the economic output of the residents was less than the cost of their confinement. The Great Confinement reflected the moral standards of the ruling classes and the moment when madness began to be associated with the inability to work and integrate into society. The Unsettling Origin of Hospitals Hospitals were initially created to contain social outcasts and those who brought shame to families. The mentally ill were often put on display like animals for those willing to pay. Between the 17th and 18th centuries, there was little understanding of mental illness, resulting in inhumane treatment. Potentially violent patients were chained and kept under brutal discipline. Hospitals functioned as a way for the authorities to avoid public scandal and for families to maintain their reputation. The Evolution of Confinement Conditions In the 18th century, there was a growing public concern about the treatment of individuals with mental illnesses and petty criminals in confinement. Facility directors initially separated the two groups for the safety of the criminals, but by the late 18th century, concern shifted towards those with mental disorders. Economic reasons also played a role in the reconsideration of confinement conditions, with the ruling classes recognizing the potential benefits of utilizing the idle labor of petty criminals and the poor. Ultimately, this led to the separation of those with mental illnesses from the workforce and the improvement of their confinement conditions. The Evolution of Mental Illness Treatments In the Middle Ages, mental disorders were thought to have physical causes, specifically imbalances in the four humors of the body. Treatments centered around countering these imbalances with exercise, fresh baths, and specific diets. Different forms of mental disorders were also associated with the humors. Melancholia and mania were the oldest and best-known disorders at the time. However, the understanding of mental illness finally expanded beyond physical causes during the 17th and 18th centuries, the so-called classical period. Psychological treatments, such as educating patients about acceptable behavior and theatrics for delusional behavior, were being added to physical treatments. Although psychology was not an established field, these early treatments were important first steps to treating the mind differently from the body. The Birth of Modern Psychiatry the creation of the first modern mental asylums in the late 18th century was brought about by French physician Philippe Pinel and English businessman William Tuke. 
Pinal and Tuke revolutionized the treatment of mental illness by doing away with physical punishment and abusive treatments. Instead, they introduced more humane and psychological approaches. Pinal removed the chains of mental patients in Paris and encouraged them to reflect on their transgressions. Tuke, being a Quaker, practiced a morality that eliminated barbaric dungeons and abusive treatments. The wardens were trained to use reason and discussion to correct undesirable behavior in patients. Doctors now had a central role in these new institutions, replacing the former prison administration. These certified institutions that held mentally ill patients sparked the development of modern psychiatric practice as a science of its own right. A controlled environment provided a platform for testing treatments and collecting empirical evidence, contributing to the growth of psychiatry. Foucault's Madness and Civilization gives us an insightful look at how society's understanding of and approach to mental illness has evolved over time. From the early days of treating the nomad as different but wise individuals, the concept of madness shifted to one associated with criminality, idleness, and undesirable behaviors. As we move towards the birth of modern psychiatry, thanks to pioneers like Philippe Pinel and William Tuke, more humane and thoughtful approaches to those affected by mental disorders began to emerge. Ultimately, madness and civilization leaves us with an enriched understanding of the complex history and social implications of insanity, as well as the progress we have made in addressing mental illness.